Now we'll move on to the final step in the process of reviewing single case design studies, the limited risk of bias step. The final step in reviewing single case design studies only applies to findings from treatment reversal withdrawal, changing criterion, multiple baseline and multiple probe designs that are eligible to receive a research rating of meets WWC standards without reservations. These types of designs must meet one or two additional criteria to ensure that there is limited risk of bias due to issues with how the study was designed or conducted. Of note, any finding eligible to receive a research rating of meets WWC standards with reservations does not need to meet the limited risk of bias requirements and the review is complete without any further steps. Moreover, alternating treatment designs do not need to meet the limited risk of bias requirements and so the review is complete without any further steps. The limited risk of bias section, which was new under version 5.0 of the handbook, includes guidelines for assessing designs for the absence of excessive therapeutic trends in the initial baseline. It also describes how to assess treatment reversal withdrawal designs for the evidence of at least minimal reversibility. These two additional criteria are intended to parallel some of the internal validity checks embedded within the visual analysis process performed by many researchers who employ single case designs. Failure to meet the limited risk of bias requirements will cause a finding to receive a research rating of meets WWC standards with reservations. Before we describe how the reviewers assess studies in this step, let's discuss some general definitions of therapeutic trend and reversibility. Therapeutic trend is a trend in the initial baseline phase in the direction of the expected effect of the intervention. For example, if an intervention is intended to reduce problem behavior and a student's problem behavior is declining in the initial baseline phase, that could be said to be therapeutic trend. The WWC cares about therapeutic trends in single case design studies because in the presence of large therapeutic trends, the observed effect of the intervention may be attenuated. Reversibility is an issue specifically in treatment reversal withdrawal designs. In the highest quality form of these designs, when the intervention is removed in the return to baseline condition, the outcome of interest should return to levels similar to those seen in the initial baseline phase. The WWC cares about reversibility in treatment reversal withdrawal designs because the lack of reversibility may indicate some issues with the design and may also attenuate the observed effect of the intervention. The exact magnitude of therapeutic trend or reversibility that might be considered a problem will depend on the intervention, the outcome, and the outcome measurement scale. Under version 5.0 of the handbook, the WWC uses non-overlap measures to assess therapeutic trend and reversibility. Non-overlap measures were originally created to help describe the proportion of data in an intervention phase that demonstrates improvement over a baseline phase. Non-overlap measures have been shown to generally agree with visual analysis judgments. Although non-overlap measures were created to make judgments about how dissimilar two phases were, they can also be used to assess the similarity between two sets of data points within or across like phases. For instance, in the case of the therapeutic trend, they can be used to assess whether there are large concerning changes in the values of the baseline data points just prior to the intervention compared to data points earlier in the phase. The WWC has selected the non-overlap of all pairs as the non-overlap effect size to use for making judgments regarding baseline trend and reversibility. The general principle for calculating the non-overlap for all pairs involves comparing all of the data points in one series, sometimes called the A series, with all the data points in the B series in a pairwise fashion. When a data point in the B series represents an improvement in the A series, that pairwise comparison receives a score of 1. When a data point in the B series represents worse performance than a data point in the A phase, that pairwise comparison receives a score of 0. Ties between a data point in the B series and a data point in the A series receive a score of 0.5 for the pairwise comparison. The non-overlap of all pairs is then calculated as the sum of all pairwise comparisons divided by the total number of pairwise comparisons. Appendix I of the handbook contains formulas and additional information regarding the calculation of the non-overlap of all pairs. 
All designs that reach the limited risk of bias stage of the review process will require assessment of therapeutic trend. Again, these designs only include treatment reversal withdrawal designs, change in criterion designs, multiple baseline designs, and multiple probe designs. At this point, reviewers should compare the final three data points within the first baseline phase to data points before the final three, using the non-overlap of all pairs calculated in the direction of the intervention effect. The final three data points will be the B series, and the data points prior to the final three will be the A series. In the direction of the intervention effect means that if an improvement is an increase in the outcome, any time one of the final three data points has a larger value than one of the data points not in the final three, that pairwise comparison receives a 1. Any time one of the final three data points has a smaller value than one of the data points not in the final three, that pairwise comparison receives a 0. This coding would be reversed if decreased values in the outcome represent an improvement in the outcome. Findings from designs with a non-overlap of all pairs less than or equal to 0.85 for therapeutic trend are eligible to receive a rating of meets WWC standards without reservations. Findings from designs with a non-overlap of all pairs greater than 0.85 for therapeutic trend are eligible to receive a rating of meets WWC standards with reservations. Finally, any baseline phase with zero within phase variance can be assumed to have met this requirement without needing to calculate the non-overlap of all pairs. This slide contains an example multiple baseline design drawn from the handbook. We recommend you try to calculate the values for the non-overlap of all pairs for baseline trend from this example to compare your answers to the ones we present here. We will also demonstrate calculating the non-overlap of all pairs for a study review in detail in the module later in this training series that is devoted to the study review guide. So in this example, all three baselines have non-overlap of all pair values well below the 0.85 threshold for therapeutic trend. Assuming this design met all the other requirements, the findings from this design would be eligible to receive a research rating of meets WWC standards without reservations. For designs like multiple baseline design where there are multiple initial baselines, each initial baseline being reviewed as part of a finding must meet the requirements for the therapeutic trend for a study to receive the highest possible research rating. So, in this particular example, if any of these three baselines had yielded a non-overlap of all pairs greater than 0.85, the highest possible research rating those findings could receive would be meets WWC standards with reservations. Now we will consider how the WWC assess reversibility. Only treatment reversal withdrawal designs that are potentially eligible to receive a research rating of meets WWC standards without reservations need to meet the WWC requirements for reversibility. To calculate the non-overlap of all pairs for reversibility, compare the initial baseline to the return to baseline phase in the direction of the intervention effect. Again, in the direction of the intervention effect means that if an improvement is an increase in the outcome, any time one of the data points in the second baseline phase has a larger value than one of the data points in the first baseline phase, that pairwise comparison receives a 1. Any time one of the data points in the second baseline phase has a smaller value than one of the data points in the first baseline phase, that pairwise comparison receives a zero. Again, this coding would be reversed if decreased values in the outcome represent an improvement in the outcome. Findings from a treatment reversal withdrawal design with a non-overlap of all pairs is less than or equal to 0.85 for reversibility are eligible to receive a research rating of meets WWC standards without reservations. Findings from a treatment reversal withdrawal design with a non-overlap of all pairs is greater than 0.85 for reversibility 
are eligible to receive a research rating of meets WWC standards with reservations. This slide contains an example treatment reversal design drawn from the handbook. You can try to calculate the non-overlap of all pairs for both therapeutic trend and reversibility from this example if you want to compare your answers to the ones we have here. As we noted earlier, we will also demonstrate calculating the non-overlap of all pairs for a study review in detail in the module devoted to the study review guide. In this example, the treatment reversal design has a non-overlap of all pairs less than the threshold of 0.85 for both baseline trend and for reversibility. Assuming that all other requirements were met, the finding from this design would be eligible to receive a rating of meets WWC standards without reservations. Now that we have covered the WWC standards and how those are used to determine WWC ratings for single-case design studies, it is important to note that many single-case studies may use designs that have more than the minimum number of phases or cases that are to meet the design standards. For instance, a treatment reversal withdrawal that had six total phases, say an AB, AB, AB design, would have more than the minimum number of phases required to meet the WWC standards. Another example might be a multiple baseline or multiple probe design with four or more cases, which would therefore contain eight or more total phases. Under version 5.0 of the handbook, designs with more cases or phases than the minimum required will receive the highest possible research rating than any subset of the design is eligible for. This is different than previous version of the handbooks. The goal of this change was to ensure that researchers who gathered more than the minimum amount of data required to meet the WWC standards were not accidentally penalized for issues like one case dropping out early from the intervention phase for reasons unrelated to the intervention in a four-case multiple baseline design. When reviewing a subset of design, there are additional details to consider. The subset of the design must contain three opportunities to demonstrate an intervention effect. In designs with reversals, non-sequential phases shall not be considered attempts to demonstrate an intervention effect. Design subsets must also still meet any other design-specific requirements, such as multiple baseline design special requirements or the limited risk of bias step of the review. Combination designs that is, designs which combine features of two designs will also receive the highest possible rating that any subset is eligible for. This is an example of a treatment reversal withdrawal design with six phases split into two conditions. This is two more phases than are strictly required by the WWC standards. The last two phases have fewer than the minimum number of observations required for the study to meet the WWC standards at any level. However, we can consider the first four phases of the design as a subset. The design has six data points in the first baseline phase and five data points in the following three phases. There are three opportunities to demonstrate an intervention effect, one at each first of the three phase changes. This finding would potentially still be eligible to receive a research rating of meets WWC standards without reservation if it met all other requirements. Next is an example of another six-phase treatment reversal withdrawal design. Unlike the last example, here we see the middle two phases have fewer data points than are required to meet the WWC's requirements. The first baseline phase has six data points and the first treatment phase, the third baseline phase and the third treatment phase all have five data points. This is four phases split into two conditions that have enough data points, which is generally sufficient for a finding to receive a rating of meets WWC standards without reservations. However, there are only two opportunities to demonstrate an intervention effect in this design using phases from the subset just described. There is one opportunity between the first and second phase, and one opportunity between the fifth and sixth phase. Recall that non-sequential phases cannot be used to demonstrate an intervention effect. The first treatment phase could not be compared to the third baseline phase. This design 
does not meet the requirement to have at least three opportunities to demonstrate an intervention effect at three points in time. Because of the lack of three opportunities to demonstrate an intervention effect, the findings from this design would receive a research rating of does not meet WWC standards. Next, consider this multiple baseline design example. It has four tiers, each split into two conditions. This is one more tier than is required according to WWC standards. The third tier's intervention phase has only two data points, which is one fewer than required for a finding from a multiple baseline design to receive a rating of meets WWC standards with reservations. However, the first, second, and fourth tiers all have at least three data points per phase, and the subset of the first, second, and fourth tier have six phases split into two conditions. If the design met all the other requirements, the finding would be eligible to receive a research rating of meets WWC standards with reservations. This concludes our module on determining research ratings for findings from single case designs. We described the data availability requirement, the requirements around systematic manipulation of the independent variable, the residual treatment effects requirements, and the design assessment stage. We also described the limited risk of bias stage of the review, which is new under version 5.0 of the handbook. We also discussed how to review design with more than the minimum required to meet the WWC standards, as well as how to review combination designs. The next module in the training series will focus on design comparable effect size used to quantify intervention effect magnitude in single case design studies. You can access all the resources mentioned in this module through the WWC website, whatworks.ed.gov.